It fit right in my pocket. I took it everywhere. Just place it on the window. The reception's better there. I ran my thumb across it till the station came in clear. And I'd sing right along to the sounds that I would hear. Hey guys, what's going on? Hey, this is Vince Bugs, and I'm down here at the Rack Studio flying solo because Mike's, Mike's got some stuff tonight he's working on. We got Daryl Mosley on tonight. I'm gonna kick a little bluegrass and talk about that little bit of country music and down home because I'm from Louisiana and I love a little bit of down home music. Daryl, how are you doing? Vince, I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm doing great, man. How's the weather up there in Tennessee? Because it's hot down here in Florida. Well, you know, we have, we're have we doing in the 70s today, and it was kind of windy. And, of course, for February, I'll take that. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. You're not dealing with any ice storms like they do in Arkansas and everything else. So let me ask you, how long have you been playing music, man? You know, I started, you know, like a lot of people, grew up in church singing, started playing guitar about 13, and uh, started singing as a summer job when I was in my teens. And so it's just kind of been a lifelong process for me. All right, so it's like is your your family musicians or is this just something that you took on as a hobby and just you migrated to it and it just became your your go-to thing? My mom, she sang and played guitar in church, you know, and that was really it. But um, you know, she's she's the one that showed me the first two or three chords on the guitar and got me started playing. And you know, but it's funny, I live about five miles from Miss Loretta Lynn and Miss Loretta had a, <laughs> get out of here. A, yeah, it was, it was great, but she had like a, back then, of course, it's still here, but it's a little different now, but back then they had at the, uh, like, a, like a ranch, like a dude ranch, and all these people would come in and camp, and, you know, and so they did a, they had a little thing called a campfire show that they hired me to do when I was about 15 or 16, so so every night I was doing a little concert for, you know, 75 or 100 people, and, and so it really got me started learning how to sing and entertain for people, and you know, I'll never forget that very first night, man. I sang for an hour. I got paid. I got a girl's phone number. I thought, man, I'm never <laughs> going to do anything else. This is it. Hey, you're like, hey, I have arrived. <laughs> That's right. I have discovered my calling. That's right. That's it, man. So, you know, what we're like, so, you know, I'm from Louisiana and, you know, everything from like uh, bluegrass to blues to, to jazz to just contemporary R&B. And, you know, and country music all blended, you know, during the different times because, you know, Elvis was that pinnacle person that kind of blended that soul and that country together. So what were some of the influences that you had, you know, in your life as you, you went through this and you decided you're going to play music? Who kind of influenced you? Well, see, that's that's one of the great things about this part of the country is you're right. I mean, there's this really this this mix of all these different styles. And 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 I grew up, my dad loved country music. And so I grew up on that. My mom loved gospel music and, and singing in church. And of course, then I discovered Elvis early on, like a lot of people did. And, you know, but then there was, you know, the the pop the stuff that was on the radio when I was a teenager. And and then I, you know, I discovered, you know, black gospel music like Sister Rosetta Tharp and you right. know and the, right. the staple singers and and so there was this 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 huge hybrid of, of musical styles that, that kind of developed in me and and I you know I still listen to lots of different things but it all just kind of came together. That was well, I figured you were like back in then you're in high school you were all in about Def Leppard. <laughs> You know, not really. That's what's funny is that, I mean, in high school, I, I sang in some of the little garage bands and we were, you know, we were doing Sticks and Loverboy and that kind of stuff. But <laughs> but secretly, I was, you know, I was listening to to Don Williams and, you know, and, uh, you know, Conway Twitty, you know, it just, it was just whatever. So, well, you know, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of people don't give Johnny Cash a lot of credit on a lot of things, you know. He had so much good influence on so many different artists, even, you know, soul artists. And, you know, you look at Johnny Cash, you look at uh, Otis Red, and you look at uh, just, just I, honestly, I tell people the best music was like at the, that mid 60s going right, like right into that early 70s. You, you just, the music is just so vibrant and, and good, you know, and I think what made you, so the question I would really want to love to ask is what really uh, made you want to be a professional um, musician? You know, I, it was just that I think initially for me that love of, of of singing in front of a live audience. You know, I mean, I've done a lot of recording and and that that sort of thing since then. But recording has never fed me the way that performing live does. There's 
and especially now as a songwriter, there's really nothing that compares to, to writing, creating a song and singing it for people and seeing them get it or, or having them come and tell stories about how, you know, that's that you were singing my life story and that sort of thing. Realizing that a part of something you've created has found its way into the fabric of their life. That's that to me, that's what that's what it's all about. Man, I, listen, man, we've all had heartbreak and we've all you know, had love. And I'm going to tell you, music just makes makes things a lot better after a heartbreak or just, you, you, when you're falling in love. You know, just music just seems to soothe the soul. So with that being said, what song are you going to sing to soothe the soul tonight to start us off? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll sing you one that was actually a, a number one song for us last year. You know, I mentioned some of my musical influences. You know, I grew up as a child in the in the seventies, way back before, you know, the internet and, and cable and all this kind of stuff. And so music was, you know, outside of just the local television station or what you might run across on, you know, on the, on your local radio, uh, it was harder to find. And so when I was a kid, my grandfather gave me this little transistor radio and it was through that transistor radio that I discovered WLS out of Chicago and red hot and blue out of Memphis and, you know, and some of these other programs and, and music and musical styles that I might've never heard otherwise. And, and so I wrote, we, my Rick Lang and I wrote a song about it and it was a number one song last year. So I'll share it with you. Congratulations. <laughs> It fit right in my pocket. I took it everywhere. Just place it on the window. The reception's better there. I ran my thumb across it till the station came in clear. Then I'd sing right along to the sounds that I would hear. Well, I couldn't see their faces. But I sure knew the tunes I'd sing out loud and play pretend guitar on mama's room. It drew me like a lighthouse with its tiny amber glow. The best friend of my childhood, my transistor radio. From the Opry down in Nashville to the Ozark Jubilee. To the new sounds out of Motown, it all sounded good to me. Well, I sang along with Elvis, played with Bill Monroe on the stage in my bedroom, and my transistor radio. Well, I learned to hear the harmony in church and Sunday school. But I practiced with Aretha when she belted Chain of Fool. And early in the morning, if I tuned it in just right, I could hear that banjo picking, making right and marble wide. Well, it's been so many years since those magic boyhood nights. Today I get my music beaming down from satellite. But it never quite feels like it did in those days long ago when I heard it through the grapevine on that little radio. From the Opry down in Nashville to the Ozark Jubilee to the new sounds out of Motown, it all sounded good to me. Well, I sang along with Elvis. I played with Bill Monroe on the stage in my bedroom and my transistor radio. I sang along with Elvis. I played with Bill Monroe on the stage in my bedroom and my transistor radio. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> Because I had a transistor radio myself. Because I'm right there in about the same age you are. So I definitely know. Hey, it was good times, man. You know, wow, you know, that brings back so many memories of everything in my life. And, you know, the things that we all, you know, shared. It was, life was simple, man. <laughs> it's yeah, a lot more complicated. You know, now entertainment is everywhere. You know, you know I, was, I was laughing the other day. You can't pump gas now without watching television on the gas pump. You know, there's entertainment everywhere now. We had to work a lot harder at discovering you know, music and, and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, so, and of course the, 
quality of that little radio was terrible, but man, it was just the best thing in the world because it was really for people in our generation. It was our only window into those into those other areas. So. All right, so let me ask you: Have you traveled overseas and played in Europe yet? You know, I'm not. I mean, I've been, of course, in Canada, Mexico, and and all through the continental U.S. But I've I've, I've been in 49 of the 50 states. We've talked about doing a European tour, and I would love to do one. We've just not put it together yet. Oh man, I need to, I need to link you up with Thomas Cavanaugh. He was just on our show, and he's a uh, he sings country, but he also sings contemporary. And he just took a couple of country singers from. Um, Nashville over with him, and they're singing on, in England right now with him on a tour he's going to have this later this year. And they just all became friends off meeting on, on this show. <laughs> and then, oh, man, that would be great. Shows. I'd love to do that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's he's killing it right now, but he's just like you, you know. He he hadn't come to the States, so the first time we started, we interviewed him, he came to the, Nashville, and he was just like, wow. And so, yeah, I mean, your voice, let me because I grew up in Europe, so I will tell you straight up, if you go to U.K., Ireland, Scotland, and definitely Germany. Oh, you're going to be a hit. You're going to be a hit because they love country music. They just love contemporary good blues, everything. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I know that, you know, one of my biggest musical influences growing up was Don Williams. And Don was huge in Europe and Scotland and that area. And, and so a lot of my songs are reminiscent of things that he would have done just because I listened to so much of that. So, yeah, I've always said I'd love to go over there and, and do some of those venues just, you know, just to experience that. Yeah, and the food. <laughs> and the, and food. the food. There you go. And the food. You got to get the food. So, let me, what's someone, what, what is your, your, so the guitars, what you started, do you play any other instruments? You know, I played bass for years and, and some other bands. I played bass on the Opry for about 10 years and, and, uh, and, you know, bass, I'm probably a better bass player. Guitar was what I started with, you know, and, and of course, as a songwriter, that's why I write most of the stuff on guitar. So uh, I've, I've learned, I've, because I play so much, I do about 140 concerts a year. So, you know, my guitar chops, you know, continue to, to improve. But but bass is probably my the best instrument as far as something that I play. Okay. Yeah, you know, my, my brother last February won a Grammy with uh, Maverick City because he sings for Maverick City. And uh, oh, wow. and I didn't I did not realize what you guys because he was a sofa sleeper until boom, <laughs> but uh, I did not realize the 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 grind because we used to tease him all the time. Are you ever going to have a real job? And then you know he hit a big and won his Grammy and a Billboard. And I realized, man, the amount of work that he put in writing. So how much writing do you actually do yourself or co have you know co write with other uh, artists? You know what? I, I always like to say that I, I, I try to always be in the in the frame of mind and you know, I always try to be thinking like a writer. You know, there are there are times like so with Rick Lane that I write a lot with. You know, Rick lives in New Hampshire, so we get online and we write together. And Rick's very regimented. He likes to write. He likes to have a schedule. And so that kind of pushes me, which is a good thing. The rest of the time, it's more of me looking for a story that I want to tell. Uh, and and then finding a way to write that. If I'm if I'm preparing for an album, I, I'm I'm a lot more focused and I'll write a lot more. I'm not I don't I have had a lot of things recorded by other artists, but I don't write a lot for that purpose. You know, it's me. It's really just more about trying to find a story that I want to tell and and telling it. All right. So let me ask you. You just brought up a great point. So how does how do artists like they want you to write something? So when you write something. Do you ever go like, ah, oh, this isn't for me. This could be great for this person. Or do you just write some stuff? And you're probably just sitting around on the bus and you know, scribble out something and you go, ah, oh, this is a good song, but it's good for somebody else. How, do you ever have those thoughts? Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, you know, you, I think you have to separate your, if you're a writer and an artist, you kind of have to separate yourself and then to know where the line draws. And there's some things that I have written that that I, that I think is a good song but it it's not for me as a, an artist and so I'll, I'll i may send it over to a friend of mine that that i think is a better fit and say this might be something you guys would be interested in you know uh because i know it's something that i'll, I'll probably personally never record uh there's other things that, I, that i've written and i know instantly that i would never show this to anybody else because i know this one's for me Okay, got you. And you know, I think I, you guys, you guys just blow my mind with the ability to understand the chord of what goes where it's on. Every time I hear somebody sing a song, I don't know how they know where to put the um or to put the ooh. They, and it's just like, how did they even know to put that in the songs? So, you know, like when you, even when you're talking, singing the song, Transistor Radio, it's just like 
you knew were like to put this certain tone or a certain and, and emphasis on certain words. So is it just an art or is it just something that comes naturally after writing and singing so long? I think it's a little of both. I think part of it is just just a natural instinct. Uh, and then I think you learn as you go along. I've always described it to people. It's kind of like if you're playing catch with somebody, how does your hand know where to go to catch that ball? You know, there's just a part of you that knows where that ball is going to be. And that's where you go. And I think the music stuff is very much the same way. You, you can learn to get better at it. You know, just because you can catch a ball doesn't mean that the Yankees are going to sign you. But the really good <laughs> ones reach that level. And and I think music is the same way. I think there's a part of there's an instinct that 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 kicks in, but there's also a learning process, and you can continue to grow and get better at it. Oh yeah, I, I love that. I love that. So with that being said, where are you going to take us next? Well, I'll I'll, I'll play you the new single. Uh, this Speaking came from a conversation that uh, Rick and I had about a, a meme that I saw online, and it said something to the effect of, you know, if you if you get advice from some old man who's who's uh, cutting up an apple with his pocket knife and eating the slices off the blade, you should probably take that advice. And he and I started, we laughed about that and started talking about these the, the older men in our lives and some of the things they've told us. And if we had listened, maybe we, they would have saved us some grief. And I said, well, that's a story that I want to tell. True statement. So, uh, you know, no doubt, you know, and so that became the like I said, that was the story I wanted to tell. So it's actually it's the new single that's out right now. So I'll share it with you. He was peeling an apple sitting in the shade, eating those green slices right off the blade. Grandpa was what you might say a quiet man. But there was so much wisdom neat that farmer's tan. I said, I want to be just like you when I'm grown. He handed me an apple, said, this is all I know. Choose the road less traveled every time you can. Try to find the good things in your fellow man. Never hesitate. To stand up for the weak And the bigger man's the one who turns the other cheek If you can say I'm sorry And learn how to forgive Well then you've had a life well lived Wealth is not determined by what you possess you know a dollar bill won't buy you happiness. Take time to show others just how much you care. Because love is something you have plenty of to share. No one else can tell you what your life is worth. Just thank God for the blessings of each day upon the earth. And choose the road less traveled every time you can. Try to find the good things in your fellow man. Never hesitate to stand up for the weak. And the bigger man's the one who turns the other cheek. If you can say I'm sorry and learn how to forgive. Well, then you've had a life well lived. If you can make each moment count and give more than you get, then you can turn the page with no regrets. Choose the road less travel every time you can. Try to find the good things in your fellow man. Never hesitate. To stand up for the weak And the bigger man's the one who turns the other cheek If you can say I'm sorry And learn how to forgive Well then you've had a life well lived well, Then you've had a life well lived Exclusive! That was point. I love it. So, listen, if you weren't a musician, what other profession would you have? 
Uh, you know, if I couldn't play or if something, if I woke up tomorrow and I couldn't play anymore, I would probably coach baseball. I love it. So what was this that you played back in the day? You know, I, I was I was a little guy. I was never the power hitter I wanted to be. Uh, I was a little second baseman guy that, you know, batted first or second in the order. And, you know, but I was never a great player. But, man, I loved it. And and I coached a, a long time you know, as best I could while I was playing. I can't anymore because I tour too much. But, but my oldest son, he's now a high school baseball coach. And so I get to go and, and live a little bit vicariously through him. And, you know, I just think baseball <laughs> yeah, is the perfect that. sport. Baseball right, is the sport where you can teach young men about life and use baseball as a metaphor. And that's oh, kind of yeah. what I did. Yeah, you're spot on, man. I coach a, a varsity football running back and recruiting coach and help with quarterbacks now and then. And, you know, I, I definitely know what you're talking about, yeah. uh, trying to reshape young people's lives. You know what I'm telling them? The challenges in the world, there is many. But you know what I would say? Uh, choices have consequences. And sometimes let's try to make better choices. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, that's the great thing about about youth sports is if if you've got the right leader, is that they can learn things like responsibility and teamwork and sacrifice and you know and 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 things that are going to transcend that the, the the playing field, and and they don't get it at the time they they realize that later, and to me and I know you know this that's the greatest compliment is a former player will come back and say, you know you helped me get it. And, yeah. you know, that's, oh, yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah, you know, and I've met a lot of young men who are who don't have a father figure and people don't, yeah. you know, they say that's not very important. I'm going to disagree with that statement on a regular basis because at some point you need to have someone to kind of guide you left or right so you can stay centered. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, nice. my son is, is coaching in, in a kind of an inner city school, and and a lot of these guys have come in, you know, from difficult family situations, and and so they kind of come in with a with a swagger and and trying to trying to show who's the cock of the walk, and and, and a lot of that comes from this deep seated insecurity, and you know, as soon as they discover that that you care about them as a person, not as a player, but as a person, it changes everything, and I, I mean, I've seen I've seen these kids whole life change because of that yeah and it touches your heart i mean you, you, oh, no you get it. it touches your heart so yeah, let me ask you what is your greatest uh, yeah so what's your greatest achievement as a musician so far uh you know i say the, the the fact that i've been able to make a living at it i mean really i mean the, i get a chance to travel and you know not many people can say that the, the, the dreams that they have when they were kids they've been able to realize most of those and i have and you know, anytime I get a chance to play the Opry or play the Bluebird or some of these places, you know, I, I try to just soak in the moment and, and realize that, you know, I'm, I'm one of the blessed ones. And, you know, I'm nowhere near the most talented person I know. But, you know, the good Lord has given me opportunities uh, sometimes that I don't really understand. But I'm I'm very grateful for. And, you know, and kindness pays off. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, so where are you going to be touring next? What, so what do you got in the hopper right now that's going to be hot coming up here? Well, you know, it's, with me, it's kind of a it's a steady it's a steady tour. I, I never really come off the road much. Uh, I mean, I'm usually in for two or three days and back out. I've got North Carolina coming up and Texas coming up, and and you know, then it, it picks up a lot more in the summer. I'll go back to Pennsylvania. Usually, every year I'll make a run through New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island. And, uh, you know, so that sort of thing. It's, uh, you know, I, I, and, and dates, new dates come in all the time. And uh, one fun thing that I've got coming up, the very first band that I ever played on the road with professionally was a bluegrass band called New Tradition. And we were all through the 90s. We did about 200 dates a year. But but we ended up kind of going our separate ways at, at, at around at 98, 99. And, but I've stayed close. We're still friends with, with all the guys. And anyway, long story short, we are doing a reunion concert. First time we've been on stage together in 25 years. And, wow. and so in Texas in May, we're, we're actually going to perform together. So we are so stoked about that. Yeah, you know, I'm going to tell you, you know, people at social media, and the internet has its drawbacks, but I will tell you that for a lot of people, it's also brought some friendships that were, would have been long lost because of, you know, Pony Express. So since the, you know, we had the internet, it has helped a lot of people find folks. And you, cause you always wonder, like, even sometimes I wonder, you know, where'd this guy go <laughs> years later? Huh? Or where, where, what happened to one of my good friends, you know? And I just lost one good friend from high school, but it's just, it's so good to be able to say, okay, I see what's happening, you know? You know, cause we, we realize we're aging, you know what I mean? 
Oh, that's been one of the great things with social media, like things like, uh, you know, like the like crowdfunding, you know, you, I'll see a classmate that has, has lost a, you know, a family member and, and they're, they're struggling financially to pay for a funeral or whatever. And, and in just a matter of minutes, those funds are raised and they're raised by maybe people that, that you haven't seen in years, but people that you connected with at some time in the past, it still has a fondness for you. And, and, you know, it'll, 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 it, it builds bridges in ways that nothing else could. And that's, to me, that's been the best part of social media. No, you know, you're absolutely right. It's all about, you know, I'm a firm believer. I, I, you know, I, I try not to go too gospel on my show, but I tell people all the time, my faith in God has probably blessed me threefold. And, you know, looking out for my fellow man, I realize some people aren't, you know, going to be kind, but I'm going to do my best to be kind until the day I got, you know, I go. And just because it's just, you know, I've been blessed by so many other things. So there are your, your own point on that. So before we get here to get to your last song, I want to ask you, um, if you had to give any advice to your younger self and what you know now, what would you tell your younger self? Um, don't compare yourself to anybody else. I mean, that's really it. I mean, because, and I think that's probably more true now than ever, because as we talked about in social media, we all tend to have this public face that we put it and, you know, that maybe not is exactly realistic, you know, and and it's real easy now, I think, to kind of compare yourself to the public face of other people. And and, you know, but I believe that that we all have a you know, we are all different. You know, we each have gifts, talents, skills, abilities, personalities that are unique. And, you know, and our path is different from everybody else's path. And I think it's life is really about learning who you are and and what you have to offer and, and what you can bring into the lives of other people. And if you can if you can stay focused on that then all the other stuff will it'll still come back around it'll all come back to you all right that's great advice there you heard that guys you heard there i'll tell you man don't compare yourself to other people always stay focused and true to who you are and with that being said daryl's gonna take us home and what you gonna what you gonna drop daryl because let's take it home there's a gentleman that used to live in my town he's passed away now uh, john l mays was his name mr john some people called him or or john l john was a was a black man who was severely autistic but mr john got up every morning and walked and he would he would go to the nursing home and visit with everybody he would walk to the hospital and visit with everybody he would go to the funerals of every funeral we had in town and uh, and when he finally passed away of course it was the biggest funeral we'd never really ever had here he's kind of a local folk hero and uh, but before they left the funeral home to take him to the cemetery, they drove his route and uh, which I thought was appropriate. But on his tombstone, there's a carved picture of him. And at the top, it says walking man. Wow. And, and I, because for people who didn't know his name, that's kind of how he was known. And and I wanted to honor him in a song and and some other walking men. And so this will be on the new album. The new album comes out later this year, but this will be on the new album. You could find him every morning on the sidewalks of our town. Rain or shine, it didn't matter. Mr. John would make his rounds. He'd be visiting the shuttings and the county nursing home. Attended every funeral, paid respects to those gone on. One foot and then the other, step by step he stayed the course. Thinking only about others, listening to the master's voice, moving with a purpose, faithful to the plan, and focused on the mighty task at hand. He was a walking man. From Atlanta down to Selma, and the streets of Montgomery, he would walk demanding that all men be treated equally. They gathered like a storm cloud and rained down on D.C., brought change to a nation with a walk and preacher's dream. One foot and then the other, step by step he stayed the course, thinking only about others, listening to the master's voice. Moving with a purpose, faithful to the plan, and focused on the mighty task at hand. He was a walking man. Well, there are those who take a side, 
Some who will take a stand, but few will take the steps required to help their fellow man. We're a world in need of more like Mr. John and Dr. King and the one who took that long walk up a hill called Calvary. First one foot and then the other. Step by step he stayed the course, thinking only about others, listening to the master's voice, moving with a purpose, faithful to the plan and focused on the mighty task at hand. He was a walking man. He was a walking man. Daryl Mosley. Woo! Hey, that was beautiful. And you know, I love the... The punch with Martin Luther King and just the, the simple fact of, you know, simple kindness, man. That is just amazing how you put that together. And Daryl, I appreciate you coming on the show tonight. It's been a blast, man. And it's been a pleasure having you out here. And stay blessed, man. Hope to have you back on when, you, when you're you already blown up. So, you know, I appreciate you talking to the little people tonight. <laughs> oh, there's, there's no little people, man. There's just people. So, Vince, it's been a, it's been a joy. I appreciate it. All right. Hey, you have a blessed day, man. And thank you. And I'll see you around on the rodeo, man. Look forward to it. See you, buddy. Keep it rolling, man. Bye. And by my good friend Charlie Smith of uh, uh, Mind Art Visual. Um, check him out, he does incredible videos. And these are like. Before I tell you, I'm talking about diet, I'm, I'm talk about modeling and all these different things. Me and Mike G want to give a shit. The journey to get there was uh, pretty hilarious on my side, I thought, anyway. Having been a.